Hi everybody, Dr. Mark here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at tubular reabsorption and secretion. Now, what is this referring to? It's referring to something called the nephron. This is the filtration subunit within all of our kidneys. And remember, the blood's gonna come in through something called the afferent arteriole, turn into what looks like a ball of yarn, it's a capillary bed called the glomerulus, and this is where we filter the blood into these tubes, which are called a nephron. Now each kidney has a million nephrons, which means we have two million nephrons in total, and we only effectively need one million to do this process properly. Now when the blood comes in and through, how much of the blood is filtered? Well, it's around about 120 milliliters per minute, which ends up being around about 180 liters per day. So 180 liters per day get filtered into this tube. Now if it remains in this tube all the way through, and comes out this particular end here, this then turns into pee. Now what do we pee out per day? It's not 180 liters, it's only 1% of this. So that ends up being 1.8 liters per day. So what that means is, throughout this process, going from the glomerulus to the capsule, so that's called the glomerular capsule, through what we call the proximal convoluted tubule, the descending limb of the loop of Henle, the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and the collecting duct, 99% of the stuff that gets filtered needs to be thrown back into the bloodstream. So remember, there's all these capillaries that wrap around these tubules, and these capillaries are called peritubular capillaries. They're going to reabsorb 99% of all the stuff that's been filtered called filtrate. And we need this to happen so that we pee out around about 1.8 liters, and so that our body maintains the appropriate concentration of stuff. Ions, amino acids, glucose, urea, all those types of things, all right? So let's take a look at this process. First thing is, at this part here, that we call the proximal convoluted tubule, what you're gonna find is that around about 65% of everything gets reabsorbed here. So here we're talking about reabsorption. So when I use the term reabsorption, it's not absorption. Absorption happens in the gut where we absorb things into the body. This is effectively, when you think about stuff being in this tubule, you need to think of it as though it's outside the body. So when it goes from this tubule back into the capillaries, back into the bloodstream of the body, that's called reabsorption. So 65% of all the stuff that gets filtered gets reabsorbed here at the proximal convoluted tubule. This loop of Henle right here, what you'll find is around about 15% of everything gets reabsorbed. And like I said, this is called the loop of Henle. This is called the distal convoluted tubule. And another 15% of everything gets reabsorbed here. And then this is called the collecting duct. And around about 5% of everything gets reabsorbed at the collecting duct. So, when we draw this up, we're gonna talk about reabsorption in these particular areas. When we draw this up, what we wanna look at is this. What's getting reabsorbed here, 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 and here back into the body? That's really important because if we were to alter this reabsorption by 10%, let's just say we didn't reabsorb everything we needed. So here, instead of reabsorbing 65%, we absorbed, let's just say, 62%. And here we reabsorbed only 13%. And here we reabsorbed only 13%. And here we reabsorbed only 4%. If we did that, what you'd find is we wouldn't pay out 1.8 liters per day, we'd pay out 18 liters per day. And that's not possible. If we did that, we would die very quickly, all right? So what's getting reabsorbed back into the body at the proximal convoluted tubule? All right, sodium ions, potassium ions, chloride ions, Calcium ions, magnesium ions, we are now going to just term these the ions. There's obviously more, but these are the ions I want you to remember. These ions are being reabsorbed at the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, as we move through, if I use the term ions again, these are the ones I'm talking about. Now, in addition to this, bicarbonate is being reabsorbed, and you're probably thinking, but that's an ion. True, but I'm not including it in this group for a particular reason. Bicarbonate water, amino acids, urea, and glucose. These are the main things being reabsorbed back into the body. Now, an important point here is this. 
This is the only place where glucose gets reabsorbed back into the body. Of all the glucose, so most simple sugar, that gets filtered here, 100% needs to be thrown back into the body at the proximal convoluted tubule. If too much glucose gets filtered, we won't have enough time to throw it all back and it will come out in the urine and this is something that often happens with diabetics. Because glucose has what we call a strong osmolarity, has a strong pulling force, it's gonna pull water with it and then you end up peeing out more fluid and this is one reason why diabetics urinate a lot. All right, that's important, proximal convoluted tubule. Here, at what we call the thin descending limb, of the loop of Henle. You can see there's a thin descending limb and the thick ascending limb. Here at the thin descending limb, water is the only thing that's reabsorbed. This is really important because the longer this tube is, the longer this thin loop of Henle is, the more water that gets thrown, in the, thrown back into the body. That's important in times of dehydration. It's important for animals, for example, that don't get enough water in. So if you find desert dwelling animals that don't ingest enough water, you'll find if you look in their kidneys that their loop of Henle is very long because it helps concentrate the urine. Think about it. Whatever stays in here becomes urine. If we throw more water out, this or the stuff in this tube becomes more concentrated. So the thin descending limb is important for concentrating urine. If we look at the thick ascending limb, what we're reabsorbing is ions. So that's these ones here and bicarbonate. If we look at the distal convoluted tubule, what we're reabsorbing is ions, bicarbonate and water. And if we look at the collecting duct, we have sodium, chloride, bicarbonate, water, and urea. So these are the major ions, nutrients, and substances that are being reabsorbed back into the body in these particular areas. That's very important, and that's the process of reabsorption. Now, if we look at the process of secretion, this is where we take things that are in the blood and throw it back into these tubules. So, let's have a look. Here, at the proximal convoluted tubule, what we're throwing back is, we're throwing back urea, we're throwing back uric acid, we're throwing back creatinine, we're throwing back hydrogen ions, we're throwing back drugs, we're throwing back ammonia. These are all the things that we want to pee out or secrete. So in the blue we've got reabsorption, in the red we've got secretion. Now nothing is being secreted here, nothing, actually one thing is being secreted here I should say, and that's urea, urea is being secreted here, nothing is being secreted here, here and here what we've got is Hydrogen ions are the predominant thing being secreted here. But we've also got some drugs and we've also got ammonia. So if we have a look at this process, we filter most things into these tubules. We reabsorb nearly 100% of it back into the body, but we secrete very specific products back into the tubules so that overall we only pee out 1% of everything that we've filtered. And this is the process of reabsorption and secretion at the tubules.